Hi, John Conley here with creating a new session in Pro Tools. All right, I've launched Pro Tools, and this is the first thing that comes up when you launch Pro Tools. By default, it's the dashboard. And from here, I can do a few things. Most importantly, create a brand new session. Uh, untitled, this is important. You wanna think about a name for your session that when you come across this folder, in a week or two months or a year from now, you have some sort of idea of what it might be based on its name and it might include a date. Maybe you put today's date in as part of the session name. So I'm gonna call this one creating a new session. Um, and I'm putting it on local storage. That means it's a local drive. It might be your internal drive of your computer. It might be a drive that's connected to your computer, a USB drive or a Firewire drive. Um, as opposed to collaboration, this is uh, gonna load your session and all your audio files into the cloud. Dun, dun, dun. That means that um, every, everybody who has a, a, an active Pro Tools uh, version gets a certain amount of cloud storage, which means that you can share your sessions, or it's a project now, with other people. Maybe you wanna have a guitar player play on your session. You can create it as a collaboration or a cloud session project, and uh, someone else can download it, add, edit, tweak, mix your project, whatever you want. And that's gonna be stored in your cloud account. And if you want more information on your cloud account, log into your avid.com account and check out your cloud storage. All right, so local storage, I wanna create this session on my drive locally. I'm not gonna create a template in this instance, but there's gonna be another video with template information. Templates are very handy, and we'll get into that. Down below here, we have some options. And most often, the default settings are fine. The file type, you have two options, WAVE, BWF, WAVE, or AIFF. It doesn't really matter. They're largely the same. The WAVE file format might get you a little more compatibility uh, in terms of the metadata that it can store. So if you're in a post-production environment, you're doing audio for TV or film, you definitely want to stick with WAVE files. Uh, otherwise, you can do AIFF. Sample rate, this is optional. Your options that you see on this list may differ from what you see here. It's based on the audio hardware that you're currently using. In my case, I have the ability to do to do sessions all the way up to 192 kilohertz or 192,000 samples per second. Think of this as um, a digital camera and uh, you know megabits, your pixels. Uh, a higher um, number is going to be higher quality, but it does come at a cost. So um, the higher sample rate uses more disk space and it uses more system resources. Most music, is done at 44.1 or 48K. That's what I use all the time. Almost all TV and film audio is done at 48K or 48,000 samples. If you're gonna be recording something that's maybe an acoustic uh, recording, uh, acoustic grand piano or acoustic guitar or vocals, you might wanna go to a higher sample rate, but that's debatable. Um, so on, in this case, I'm gonna go with 48K and then the bit depth is also a, a part of the resolution of the audio that we're using. So 24 bit is very standard. So most of my sessions are all 48K, 24 bit, and I.O. settings, I'm gonna use last use. I'm just gonna go with the default, and we're gonna get more into that in the I.O. settings video. All right, interleaved, this means that any stereo files I create or record in this session will be a single file on my hard drive, but it will contain both the left and the right audio channels. So you can change this at any point. I usually turn it on. And at the bottom, the bottom is prompt for location. Where on my system do I wanna put this session? And this is important if you have an external drive that you've dedicated for your audio sessions, which is not a bad idea. So I'll use prompt for location as opposed to location. I can you know, specify a particular location and all of my sessions that I create new will land in that folder. In this case, I'm gonna use prompt for location and hit create. And where am I gonna put it? I wanna put it on my audio drive and I'm gonna put it right there at the root level, hit save. 
and there we go. Now, I have blank windows, right? I created a blank session. So from here, I'm gonna clean it up a little bit and I'm gonna create a couple of new tracks. We'll do, let's do four new audio tracks. And there we have the beginning of our session. There's the edit window. I'm gonna do command equals on a Mac or control equals on a PC to get to my mix window. I'm gonna situate that here. And of course, open that up a bit. What I might do too is open up my, um, my options and my tools at the top of the edit window. I'm gonna go all the way to the upper right to the edit window view selector. I'm gonna turn on my MIDI controls, my expanded transport, and we'll open up the clip list as well. Those are the things I normally use. Of course, these are all optional. If you don't wanna show them up here at the top of the ed edit window, that's up to you. All right, so that is creating a brand new session uh, stay tuned for the creating sessions via a template. Good stuff.